Yeah, I'm not sure I like how this is looking. Yeah, let's start again from scratch. Let's just get rid of this. Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we'll be taking a look at how we can use After Effects to create this uh, sort of single line stroke animation that contains a lot of colors, details, and uh, information within it. Uh, now I know that there's uh, there's been multiple uh, plugins and scripts that can help us achieve this look But today I think we're gonna rely on an old technique that I've done in a video about a year ago This video is gonna be like a like an expansion on that idea on that technique and see how far we can go Using that technique to customize our shape. So I hope you guys enjoy this one and let's get into it Right, let's get started. So uh, we're gonna create a new shape layer and I'm gonna draw out a simple line setup like this containing three sort of three tops over here. Uh, what we're gonna make sure not to do is make sure they don't overlap each other like this. Uh, and we certainly don't want that. I'm gonna draw them out sort of like a like a sine wave. Yeah, and I'm gonna put in a new stroke. Uh, get rid of the fill over here and so this is something we're gonna work with and I'm gonna refine this a little bit make sure they go uh, not too vertical but like uh, diagonal like this so it's uh, it looks a little bit more interesting shape wise right that's good enough I'm gonna drag down the uh, uh, stroke width over here probably 65 yeah, that's good enough. And name, I'm gonna name this a base layer. And so, first one I'm gonna do is make sure all the settings of the stroke is uh, uh, the settings that I want. Uh, I'm gonna drop down the content over here, shape path, and stroke number one over here. I'm gonna turn the uh, butt cap to round cap and the middle join to round join. Uh, so that's all out of the way. I'm gonna add in a trim path over here. And for this trim path, I'm gonna just drag it outside to the content over here make sure it covers the whole thing and here we can drag it from uh you know the the basic setup of trim path like you can drag down the completion uh, level of the lines uh from starting to like from zero percent to hundred percent or the ending to hundred from hundred percent to like zero down to zero percent that's pretty basic stuff from the last video i think and also it's just like from the last video what we're gonna do now is create another shape layer uh pretty much duplicating this out over here uh, i'm gonna kind of call that line number two over here i'm gonna color it something else it's like uh, orange like this uh, just a quick reminder about last video the technique that I had was actually parenting this path over here of the new shape to this base layer shape over here uh, to the path of the base layer shape but how I'm gonna do that is going uh, click on the pick whip over here and drag it to the path and then I'm just gonna drag down this trim path so we can see a little bit better but yeah uh, how we're, however, we're gonna treat the base path, the uh, the second duplicated path is gonna move accordingly. So that that was the whole basis of the first tutorial video about the, this line. But uh, today we're gonna go a little bit further. So to move on to that next step, I'm gonna undo all these changes over here drag the end into 100 percent on this path over here obviously it's connected to the base layer path i'm gonna delete this expression over here um <laughs> that's actually look pretty good um okay so i'm gonna put this uh, line over here into its own composition i'm gonna pre-comp that and call this uh whole comp over here gradients Okay, that's good and what i'm going to do now is jumping into this gradient uh pre-comp over here drag this gradient pre-comp to the side so while editing this i noticed that the part that was supposed to be crucial to the tutorial was actually blocked off by my face over here so what happened when i drag this pre-comp tab over here to this side it's gonna create some uh, some sort of extra slots for the tab in after effects to be put in 
and when I do that, I can actually display two composition at once. Drop down, uh, drop down the settings of the base layer, and drop down the settings of uh, line number two over here. I'm gonna repeat the same thing, but at this time, here's something new. You can actually take the settings from this composition over here and pick with that to another composition. Bam! And now you get the lines over here absolutely connected to the uh, line in the base layer. Uh, however, you decide to move the line in here, uh, the line and uh, the other the other comp is gonna be affected as well. And here to prove that uh, has actually worked, I'm gonna drop down the uh, uh, trim path over here. I'm gonna trim this path down and jump it back into the base layer. And as you can see, yeah, it's still moving accordingly. So that is sort of where the floodgate sort of opened up a little bit. Uh, make sure the start is always at 0% uh, over here. I'm going to drag the end down around here. Bear with me just for this moment. I'm going to add another trim path over here. And what I'm going to do is uh, the end of the trim path number 2. I'm going to take that end and pick with that to the ending of trim path from base layer. There we go. So, so the whole point of what we just did was actually to make sure that the ending of the uh, second line over here uh, actually follows the end of the first line. As you can see over here, if it drop down the end amount of the trim path, the second line is gonna be it's gonna be trimmed up as well. If you drag it from zero percent to a hundred percent over here, it's gonna give us an effect as if you know the the color is actually following the uh, the creation of the line. Whichever amount the uh, the end percentage of the baseline, the other line is gonna be eighty eight percent completion of our baseline. You know, if the line is just five percent, it's gonna be this short uh, piece over here. 88% of that is gonna be this part right here. So yeah, that's pretty much our whole setup for the color. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is jumping into the gradient uh, pre-comp over here and start, you know, customizing, putting in, co putting in colors, pretty much everything goes. I'm gonna make sure I turn this into a, a gradient first. So in order to do that, I'm gonna put in a blur effect, maybe a fast blur on line number two. Drag it up like that. Hey, maybe thicken up the stroke a little bit. And as you can see, the uh, we got a sort of a glow effect over here. We don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is drag in the pick whip or the track mat over here. Put that on the uh, base layer, and also re-enable the uh, base layer again. Now, as you can see, we got a sort of a, a gradient effect that also seems to follow where the line is going. So uh, what we're going to do now is play around with that a little bit inside of the uh, gradient pre comp over here. I'm going to duplicate this line in whichever setting we have uh, in the last line. It's also going to be connected to this base layer line over here. Uh, I'm going to color something else, maybe like a tint of blue. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna jump into trim path number one over here. I'm gonna drag this down to maybe like 59% uh, of our base uh, line. And so the same principle applies as we drag it up. So I spent the next few minutes adding more color strokes onto the line. And with each new strokes, the line gets increasingly shorter. And as you may have noticed, one of the lines has been distorted to make it look as if it's surrounded by grains. Well, that was achieved thanks to an effect called scatter. I'm trying to think of things that we can actually do to this lines over here. You know, work that will create a little bit of a textures inside. More stuff to it. I'm gonna duplicate this line. Uh, maybe color it yellow and put in a uh, ball action, CC ball action. Yeah and delete this fast box blur over here i'm gonna decrease the ball size and just increase the spacing over here i mean i'm enjoying this is this is uh this is very real a thera therapeutic uh, experience over here wow um okay so uh now we've sort of got a line that um looks pretty good i'm feeling happy I'm actually very happy with this result actually. Uh, what we're gonna do now is jump into keyframing and animating and you know putting this line into life, which is one of the parts that I most enjoy during the process. 
uh, what I'm gonna do now my plan is to have the line grow out over here and just swish to this part and this one is gonna come up with some sort of momentum because of the momentum of the line it's just gonna slightly drift up like a, like a kinetic motion drifting up from the uh, motion of the line so right now I'm gonna put a keyframe at N uh, over here I'm gonna drag it to uh, 8 sort of like an ant anticipation of what's gonna happen next a few seconds like a few a few frames later I'm gonna drag it up to 31 30 percent so sort of where it's gonna end up at the bottom of hill number two a few seconds in because it's gonna jump over hill number two and uh, gonna it's gonna land at the bottom of hill number three and boom it's gonna end up over here and take uh, sometimes to finish this whole sequence yeah if we watch it back it's gonna wow that looks good <laughs> uh, highlight all the uh, all the keyframes over here and press F9 and over here for the part that it, where it goes from uh, the beginning to the bottom of line number one over here I'm gonna make sure that's a smooth curve like so so uh, we're in the speed graph by the way if you don't know I can you can toggle between the value graph and the speed graph I always tend to use the uh, the speed graph but up here as soon as is I want it to sort of jump like skip through this line skip through the tip right here and ease down wherever it gets to the bottom but it's also not gonna land at zero zero pixel pixel per second over here let's just play it back boom yeah there we go like that and also this one is just gonna skip through the hill number two as well I'm gonna drag that in this whole line over here is just indi sort of indicates the speed that it's going through uh, from this keyframe to this keyframe and that's super fast how it's going through that Maybe too fast. I still want to see a little bit of the action going on. Same goes for the final hill before it stops at the end. And it's just gonna slowly drift to the ending over here gonna make sure that's a smooth curve doesn't have to be too smooth but you know this part just way too way too fast over here we can't see can't see what's going on so we're just gonna drag these keyframes out and yeah that's good enough okay and I'm gonna create another shape over here that's gonna be the first form of the line where every every single one of the hills are just uh, are just sort of shorter than is supposed to be to create that uh, sort of create that momentum or maybe I could just delete this uh, ending layer entirely and just animate each of the line uh, each of the hills sequentially as a, as a line starting to comes up boom so the first line is gonna be finishing up here I'm gonna drag the first line up like that to my desired uh, height. Okay, keyframe those two and drag them down like so. And maybe drag the uh, maybe drag the beginning down so we get a smooth curve. And as I'm gonna drag this first keyframe to where the ball sort of uh, just finishes up its, uh, its uh, trip over the hill. There we go, we get that sort of uh, momentum as a line go through the hill and the hill, the tip of the hill over here just sort of carries that momentum out. Uh, same goes for this one, I'm gonna repeat the same process again. As soon as it's uh, done going over the hill, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab these two paths over here and drag them up where the original height that I had planned. Just also gonna repeat the same process, I'm gonna drag this in. Um, maybe have it over here. It's not going over the hill yet, so there's no sort of no reason why it's, it should be growing up here. 
There we go. It's like shooting up and momentum. That's very good. I love that so much. And the same goes for this final one. Um, also, just gonna drag this line up, have it curved, and be a little bit diagonal. There we go. We have a little bit of lag going on over here because the uh, line is still growing. So I'm gonna drag this in a little bit. Make sure the motion is smooth. There we go. Right. <laughs> it's actually looking pretty good. Yeah, so um, that's pretty much it. Anything else I need to... Yeah, okay. So the first few minutes of the video, I, I want you guys to draw out this line that it's not... Uh, that's not going uh, over each other or overlapping uh, with each other. The reason why is because of the grain of the inside is gonna create this sort of uh, intersection between the shapes over here. Even though we got this line mass into the original shape, the uh, lines of the color inside of them is gonna move uh, accordingly to the line and it's just not gonna decide you know, it's not gonna decide to stick with the original shape, or the original mass of the base layer, but instead it's just gonna go over each other. So we get some pretty, you know, pretty interesting uh, color overlapping going on over here, but it's just not what we're uh, we're after. So until Adobe implements a green stroke update in After Effects, I would like to draw your attention to a free plugin called uh, Thick Stroke. That's with a double C. Is a plugin that creates a stroke with true gradients along a path, as well as many other options to fiddle with in a stroke line. It's so much fun, you'll have a stroke of joy when the. So, yeah, a uh, link to the plugin is down below in the description. Make sure to check them out. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the result, honestly. Yeah. Um, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Yeah. Bye bye.